up like people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Reality simple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. then we have about 10 minutes so i have a lot to cover and uh, on this busy let ye get busy what i want to talk about very quickly is that i've been approached by many black uh, persons and they claim that prior to europeans that africa or when the earth was inhabited only by black people, that these black people live in some type of heaven. They live in some type of utopia. This could be true, but it is not part of our reality. We know nothing of it. According to the writings by any historian of any tribe, any nation, you will see violence. You will see forms of wicked, what these uh, religious people call unrighteous behaviors. There is no utopia. Even in religious teachings, you do not see any sign from the very beginning. You see a violent, very rebellious type so-called human being. Now, if the black man lived in some type of utopia, if it was your nature to live in what we call peace, then you would see signs of that in yourself right now. But you don't. If you take a rabbit, a rabbit has a peaceful nature. No matter what you do to a rabbit, it's very difficult to get a rabbit to bite you and fight you and, and act violent. So, uh, so, a, so is a goldfish. A goldfish and a rabbit, they are very docile. You do not see them running around fighting and acting silly because they have a peaceful nature. However, among hyenas and tigers and flesh eaters, and you are and have become a flesh eater, you see anger, violence. If they were human beings, they would be very profane, vulgar, disgusting. So if the black man, if, if you claim that it is the black man's nature to be peaceful, then why aren't you peaceful? In fact, many of you will get angry just, just the fact that I'm saying that there was no utopia. You would threaten my life all angry and upset, but you are of peace. There is no sign in you of this utopia. You was, you was violent. Our people was violent prior to Europeans. That's the reality of it. And you can show no proof of any anything other than that. Because you still exhibit it with or without Caucasian people around. There are no Caucasian people in many of these black neighborhoods, but it is your nature. But you will get a gun and kill a black face quickly, and you will blame that on slavery. But those Africans was doing it prior to the Europeans. Ain't no different. Let me hit these points within the next six minutes. Point number one, the Africans, these black people, have spears. They develop the technology of spears. What is a spear? A spear is designed to kill something. You can go out into the forest 
and kill a, a buffalo or a, a pig or whatever it is, animal that you want to eat, you can use the spear. But we do know that the black man used the spear to kill other black people. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Not lying. Lying. <laughs> How do you build great cities? Civilization. In order to create a civilization, a, a large nation, a country, you start small. And most times, the one uh, certain uh, town or tribe, they go out and they conquer their neighbors. And as they conquer their neighbors, they grow into large territories. And they take over things. They do not do this by being nice. Oh, will you join our clan? Will you come? No, I want to do my own thing. Oh, no, you don't. I take my spirit. <laughs> That's what they done. The first slaves, point number three, the first slaves were prisoners of war. So if there was some type of utopia, in fact, if there was some, to some type of utopia, everything was all peaceful, how did war begin? According to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, there was a scientist. And if he was so peaceful, he tried to blow up the earth because he wanted everybody to speak one language. And since this scientist could not get his way, he, blew, he tried to blow up the earth. According to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, that don't sound peaceful. And that was a 66 some trillion years ago, wasn't it? It was a long time ago. So there was no peace. There was no utopia. Then if you got people running around so angry, so upset, they willing to blow up the earth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said 100% dissatisfaction will produce 100% change. So you have people acting crazy, black folks, you acting crazy, all over the planet, wherever you are, you don't have no dang sense. And the Hebrew Israelites teach that the reason why black people are in the condition we are in, we become cursed and we are being punished by God for being a rebel against his law. I would say that the black man and woman these original people, their children have been punished because not because they upset some type of God, but because they decided to act other than their intelligence. Here you are, the greatest intelligence on the planet, and you're acting like a fool. You're acting worse than the, the beast of the field. So, since you can't act right, then there's a change coming. So next thing you know, since y'all blacks want to be crazy, since the original man, y'all want to act crazy and insane, then since Elijah Muhammad teaches us that out of 100% dissatisfaction comes 100% change. A change is a coming. And he's getting on boats coming from Europe. And he's going to change your life. You will never be the same again. You want to be crazy? You want to kill? You want to lie? You want to cheat? You want to rape? You want to do all these things? Then let, let us show you how it's really done. Then these strange pink people start showing up on your shores. You want crazy? I'm going to give you crazy. And you've been punished. And you've been raped. And you've been robbed. And you've been all the evils that you've done to yourself. To your own brothers and sisters. It has been done unto you. And now after suffering 400 years. We hope. That you learn your lesson. Original man. Now it is time. That you can come back to your own. And be yourself. Not what you was then. But what you can become your potential. From learning these lessons. From being punished for 400 years. 
if you ain't learned nothing after 400 years, then I suggest to any God, any creator, it is time that you destroy these people 1,000%. So with that said, I would like for you to present and show evidence of your fictional fairy tale utopia because it never existed. Not even according to religious teachings or the writers of present historians. If you can show other, jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This is your brother, Angel Slum Nuff 7. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Till next time, y'all. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program known here on the World Wide Web. Some of y'all call the Internet, however you view it, I'm known as the Mighty, Mighty. Mighty, mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. <laughs> you know, this particular subject matter, this particular topic really grinds my gears. It makes me sick to the stomach. I've never been around. I've never heard so many black men, so many black males. I have to say black males because it's very difficult to think that a man would behave and act in this manner. These black males who've yet to understand what manhood is because their manhood is rooted and based, and they copy the only man they've ever known, and that is the racist Caucasian male. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but this grinds my gears that black males, so many of you, have developed this hatred for the mother, hatred for the black woman. And see, my suggestion to you, if you hate women so much, if you got a problem with women, these black women so much, just leave them alone. And why don't you just get yourself a good man? Because clearly, if you don't want a woman, you must want a man. So get your man. Go Get you a condominium, a cottage or, or somewhere, nice little apartment. Get your man and some Vaseline and y'all, sh you can shut up. Makes no sense for you to go all over the internet talking about women do this and the feminism and the feminism did that and the womenism and all that old silly garbage that y'all spew. Get your man. Go in a corner, get your can of Vaseline, and shut the hell up. I ain't never seen so many males on social media express hatred for, for women. And I'm, and I'm saying that y'all must want a man, because in reality, some of you do. And you do have a man. And some of y'all brag, well, I got a Caucasian pink woman. I got another woman. Well, you take that and go somewhere and have a good time and live happily ever after and shut the hell up. Because when you finally run into real men, we don't want to hear your nonsense and that crazy stuff that you're talking. Mess around and get your lip busted. Nobody want to hear that foolishness. 
never in a time in history as long as the black man been in America never have it been in a time in history that the black man I said black males behave the way they do towards their mother we always talk about the Caucasian man is after the black man and he is he's always wanted to destroy the black man and you are a perfect example of a destroyed man so you will know no better and since you are destroyed now you've taken it upon yourself to try to destroy the black woman because you feel shame because she's stronger than your ass is and that's what that's what the bottom line is you view her as somebody stronger why don't why don't the Caucasian people attack her like they do you you're the man I thought you are the provider the protector and the builder and all this other stuff that you be talking about you don't have nothing and you get angry at the black women because they know you are nothing so instead of attacking the races that made you nothing you're going to attack the black woman you should be shame of yourself and instead of attacking the black woman learn how to be a man instead of a black male a black man a real man wanna be that's what you are and you actually think that you impress somebody you don't impress me none of you suckers impress me even as a child been looking for a man all my life none of you fit the criteria the man in my life that I look up to somebody like Malcolm X Elijah Muhammad even Farrakhan and Jesse Jackson and all, all our fighters men that stood up against this beast regardless to their method they stood up and you in a corner crying oh the feminism oh the black women do this and they hold and they sluts and they, ain't nobody more of a bee than you are sucker never in a time in history have black men been so weak when did this begin I got to have some type of idea so just thinking a little bit when did the hatred of the black woman actually begin it's been around a long time and the black women and women in general have tolerated this hatred this jealousy this envy that men hold towards them not only from black males Caucasian male Chinese male men all over this planet have a hatred towards women view women as an inferior view women the same way as the racist view black people and you said that's wrong but you have no problem with viewing women in the same kind of way when did this actually begin to form this black male hatred for towards black women when did this start let's see can I get an idea if we go back to physical slavery you really had no reports the black male the black man who was a slave a physical slave did not run around talk about the black women do this and the black women did that and the black you never heard that and of course you have your explanation for that but regardless he didn't do it never talked about it but and you know something that's because you were both in the same sad situation though the Caucasian pink people raped the black woman and the Caucasian pink people raped the black man she worked up from she worked from sun to sundown it was equal opportunity oppression and of course since the since the majority of the slave masters in power were male of course the black woman would get the brunt of the rapes and the sodomy and all these other the, the sexual perversion of the slave owner the black man also got his share because 
these slave, these Caucasian slave owners, we know some of them was homosexuals. And they was pedophiles. And you wonder, this went on for hundreds of years, and you don't understand why we're in the shape and the condition that we're in. This can carry on, even into generations that was not actually experiencing this madness. Look it up, y'all so smart, do your research. It's there, but you rather talk your crap because you want to blame somebody rather than the perpetrator. Because you don't want to say, it's the pink people. The pink man do this. We got to stop blaming the pink people. They are the reason. And so instead of blaming the actual perpetrator, you rather blame yourself. That's a sickness. But that's what happens. The abuser usually blame themselves for their victimization instead of the abuser. You suffer from post-traumatic slave syndrome. Look it up. Check it out. But you rather ignore all the real science, all the real psychological things because you don't want to blame your master because actually you have become your masa. To speak against masa is speaking against yourself. So when were the first signs that this was happening? The first signs that this black man began to oppress his black woman after so-called freedom. After this Caucasian people let y'all free. Let us free. Then this black man began, since he got his freedom, he wants to feel like a man. The only person that he has as an example for manhood is Jesus of the Bible, a fictional character. But above all, the real, his only influence and example for manhood is the racist Caucasian men. So black men all over this country began to copy and mimic what they saw in the racist Caucasian men. And you would think after all these hundreds of years of dealing with this person, you would not want to copy anything this fella do. But they did it. So just like the racist pink men, the black man, even after struggling with the black woman, equal in slavery, this black man began to copy his masa, and his masa is a woman hater, and the black man began to hate his woman. The racist pink man views his woman as a breeder, exploits her. She's a, she's a, he pimps her out. She's a prostitute. Call her a slut and a whore. And the black man did the same, began to do the same thing after he gained his freedom. And he started copying his masa. And the black woman, because of her love, even though you ignorant as hell, she tolerated your nonsense. But then one day, justice began to come because one day the black woman heard the voice of the women's live movement, the, the feminist movement. That's something y'all really hate to talk about. That's what y'all really hate. And the black woman was attracted to the feminist movement. The women's live movement. This Caucasian woman's movement. Even though this Caucasian woman had no respect for her. But the black woman saw herself abused. Neglected. Mistreated by her man. Just like the Caucasian woman was mistreated. Abused. Exploited by her man. Unequal. So, so in essence, the black man, you... You are the one that gave your woman to the feminist. So if you want to blame somebody for feminism, women's black live or however you want to talk about it, black men, the reason, you are the reason that pushed her that way. And now you're angry because she rebels against your slavery, against male injustice. I'm not going to be your slave no more. I'm now, I'm not just a breeder. I'm not just somebody you can lay down with 
If I work, pay me equal pay. I want the same thing. And so the black man is angry just like the racist pink male. He's angry at black people that stand up against them. And you angry because the black woman stand up against your wickedness. I've never had a problem with women. Regardless if they lesbians, feminists, educated, whatever they, whatever form the woman is, I've never had a problem with them. Feminism never been an issue to me. Because, see, it is natural for a woman to recognize her true provider, her protector, the essence of manhood. And regardless if she's a lesbian or feminist or educated, that's still part of her. And when she recognized that, from my experience, and I've seen it many times, she will submit. You don't have to trick her with religion. You have to trick her or beat her with the club. She recognized her counterpart and she will submit to that. Maybe because of the mistreatment, she'll be wary and she'll be care, uh, cautious. But eventually, you will see her all that being bad and strong and trying to be tough. All that will go away when she recognized a real man. You're not a real man. Because you've been copying a fake man, a weak man, a bully. And so she's tired of being bullied around, made an inferior, breeder, a sexual toy. Nobody want to be treated like, did you like being treated like that when we were in slavery? And that pedophile slave master came to get your booty? Well, if you didn't like being abused, what make you think these women want to be exploited, abused, mistreated? Treated unequal? Looked upon as some kind of inferior? She's your real and all this other nonsense that y'all talk about. And she's the curse and all this other crazy stuff y'all talking about. Get out of here. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me that a woman is a black man's heaven. There's nothing more beautiful than being surrounded by women. And since y'all don't want the, the sisters, then take the sisters fat, ugly, pretty, however the shape, whatever, smart, tall, and put the women around me. I'll be happy because... I'll be in heaven and I feel heavenly. And you can take your hard, dusty man in the corner and y'all can do y'all thing. And take this bucket of grease because I'm pretty sure you're going to need uh, you're gonna need a lot of that. The woman must be made free. Just like the black man. Black people must be free from racism. The woman must be free from this patriarchal Oppression. She must be free. If you want a slave, then I suggest that you go buy yourself a dog, a cat, a cow, or a chicken or something. Matter of fact, I heard that cows and dogs, they make good love mates too. Since you, you might not want a man, you don't want a woman. Maybe you can get down with a cat or a dog or a cow or something. But the main thing, it's, it's sickening to me, and it really grinds my gears. So many women haters, women bashers. If you don't like black women like that, then just leave them alone. Shut the hell up. Get your man. Go on about your business. I'll be happy to take what you don't want. <laughs> There's plenty of men that would like for you to to. to Give him a call. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This your brother Tony Rock. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.
in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub nub seven, I is your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Raw. I hope that, that <laughs> tongue tied already. I'm tongue tied because I have a lot to cover, and I hope that you bear with me as I, within these few brief moments, cover a lot of ground. Okay, here we go. I am so happy to know that after three weeks of missing, that our brother, Minister, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, has returned to his uh, weekly series, The Time and What Must Be Done. I've always since he began this series, tuned in to hear what our brother has to say. For many of you who are sick individuals, you may believe that I might tune in to listen to Farrakhan just to find something negative I can speak on. Well, see, if that was true, almost everything that he would say, I would have something to say in the negative, if that was my intent. I am sure that there are those who listen to me. It makes no difference what I say. They will always find something they can speak of in the negative. But that is not where I come from. That's not my intent. He is a source of my learning. So I can listen to Brother Farrakhan and what I believe or feel is good for me, I will embrace that because I do not reject the truth. I do not reject what is good if it is a it is if it is a benefit regardless to the vessel that that truth comes in y'all suffer many of you suffer because truth has to come in a certain vessel if that truth or if what is good does not come in a certain package then you will starve to death then you will suffer because you're looking for a special package. And sometimes, in a survival situation, you can't be picky. The black man and woman in America, you cannot afford, I cannot afford, we cannot afford to be picky. We are in a survival situation. So we must be able to, de to discern what is good for our survival no matter what tree it grows from. So if it comes from the Hebrew Israelite tree, I will pick it. If it comes from the more science temple tree, I will pick it. If it comes from the nation of Islam tree and so forth, I will pick it. I will peel what needs to be peeled, throw away what needs to be thrown away, but when I put it all in the pot, I got a good nutritious soup that I can consume. And I will be greater and I will be stronger and mature and grow better than any of you waiting for a certain cow, waiting for a certain chicken, waiting for a certain tree. In a survival situation, you can't wait for something special. You have to take advantage of what is available so that you can get the proper nutrients so that you can continue to progress. That's why... Overall, the black conscious community, this black liberation struggle, it is weak. 
and it continues to fall. You talk a good game. You even walk a good game. But you cannot play the game. You're not even on the field. You're too weak. You're suffering from malnutrition. Because you and I, we're in a survival situation. And you do not know how to take advantage of the resources that are available to you. And so the enemy takes advantage of your foolishness. The enemy takes advantage of your silliness. And they grow stronger. They get wiser while you continue to talk, while you continue to crawl on your all fours, going fast nowhere. That category, I don't want to be a part of. So I don't listen to Farrakhan to make mockery. I don't listen to Farrakhan to find something negative. I listen to Farrakhan because he's an elder person with a lot of experience and I can learn, you fools. But at the same time, I would advise our elders. I would advise those of us who think we are so divine and believe that we are so smart. I would advise us to also look at your little brother and sister in the street that's trying to tell you something. The little baby that can barely talk. You ignore them. That's just a child. They don't know anything. You said God uses whom he pleases. So if God uses whom he pleases and God put wisdom in the little baby. If God put wisdom in a person that you call an atheist then you don't even believe your teaching because you're looking for a, a certain vessel and God, Allah, uses all vessels. There is no special vessel. And you do yourself a disservice and you will suffer and pay the consequence for not being more mature and more wiser in a survival situation. I am happy upon learning that Louis Farrakhan is all right and he has returned to this series called The Time and What Must Be Done. Brother Farrakhan said that he was missing for all these weeks because he needed a rest. But he did not get the rest. He was still busy. And of course, as you know, Brother Farrakhan has suffered from prostate illness and that could also have something to do with him with his wanting to take a break but also what made me really begin to listen to what he had to say was not only did he need rest but there were internal problems in the nation of Islam that he had to deal with now, see, for me, and for some of us, that might, that, that's a, what's that called, that, that's a, a warning sign, it's not a warning sign, it's a, it's a, it's a, I can't think of the word that I want to, I want to use, but it's a sign of something that's happening. We all have internal problems. As an individual, we have internal problems. In our homes, our families, in our schools, in the government, there are internal problems. But what comes to mind when Louis Farrakhan said, I have to deal with internal problems, what is the latest thing that could be an internal problem in the nation of Islam? And for me, I might guess, could it be Brother Farrakhan? And of course, he would not tell us what those internal problems is because that's a personal thing. Private matter, matter that must be handled within the nation of Islam itself. 
But Brother Farrakhan recently embraced Scientology. And my question and my guess is that after all this time, these few years, this Scientology that you embraced, that you thought could help the nation of Islam, save the nation of Islam, even financially, although, of course, we would not want to speak of that. But is it that Scientology is part of the internal problem that you had to deal with? That Scientology is not working out the way you thought it might work out. Some of us must learn the hard way. Some of us, no matter how intelligent we may, we may think we are, no matter how much personal experience we have in life, some of us, we must learn the hard way. The problem with learning the hard way is that sometimes you don't get a second chance. Sometimes you pay for what, whatever it is with your life. So you learn a lesson, but you will not live to learn the lesson for whatever it is that you was uh, involved in that you should not have been pursuing. And it is not about jealousy or hate or envy or, or, or dislike of Louis Farrakhan. For me... I believe that, in fact, I know that it is not a wise move to embrace Scientology the way that Louis Farrakhan decided to embrace Scientology. It is all right that we learn from Caucasian people. In fact, he was our first teacher. Besides our mother, we went and we've been educated in the Caucasian pink people school. And there are many things that we learn from Caucasian pink people that is of value. But when you take Scientology and try to and make it part of who and what you are that has nothing to do with Scientology, in fact, under the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was taught that I should be trying to disconnect from my oppressor Rather than connect. So here you are. Taking Scientology. Not just learning. You are connecting. To your oppressor. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad made very clear. That we should be. Disconnecting. From our oppressor. You are happy. And proud to say. I have Jewish friends. Or associates. When. How can we be proud in having Caucasian pink friends, Jewish friends, but we have yet to have black unity, black unification. If you are to have Caucasian friends, if you are to have white friends, why is it not a priority that you make friends with yourself first? Love yourself first. That is the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the love for self. Love yourself first. So you make a grave mistake to embrace Scientology and your white friends. And so now you beg the black community, join me in the economic program. Join me and pool our dollars. If you had worked since the Million Man March, to unify your brothers and sisters, unify your people, you will not have to be begging for them on an economic plan. You should have initiated Muhammad's economic plan years and years and years ago. And upon the success of Muhammad's economic program, you will have been able to unite and unify the black community. But you failed to do that and did not Attempt to do, to do that. Instead you chose. To do something else. Which weakened. Your bottom line. And, I, and when your bottom line. Began to weaken. 
out of frustration and desperation, you reached out to Scientology. Something that you should be disconnecting yourself from instead of connecting. It is like reaching out to a snake and then you get bit by the snake and you expect good results. So you don't have to tell us about your internal problems. We can almost guess because you cannot mix the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with Scientology. They don't coincide. It's like oil and water. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was designed to unify black people. Not to connect with the oppressor. And so now your connection with the oppressor is causing internal problems because internally in every follower of those who say they love Elijah Muhammad, internally, somewhere deep inside of you, you know something here is wrong. But you love Farrakhan, but something here is wrong. So you got a devil and you got God fighting up inside yourself. And you torn between God and the devil and your love for Louis Farrakhan. There is an eternal struggle going on. You don't have to tell me about it. I can almost guess. They don't mix. But if you had stayed on the path that the messenger laid out for you, you would never have become frustrated. Thus, you would have no need, you would not have become desperate, desperate in order for you to believe that the oppressor and any wisdom coming from Caucasian people can save you. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that God came to him in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And if God came to the black man and woman of America, don't it make sense that God would give you everything that you and I need? God's teaching, God's word that was given to his messenger to us don't need, to, don't need no supplementation. But if you don't know how to use these teachings wisely and you really don't know what you're doing, it sounds like you do. It looks like butter, but it's not. It's chiffon. So you gave up and went seeking refuge, not in God. You began to seek refuge in the oppressor. Scientology can fix it. Elijah Muhammad and Master Farah Muhammad ain't enough. If God brought you these teachings, he gave you everything that you need. You don't need nothing else. Maybe you need to look for it, but it's there. And when your God present something, it's on time. He don't give nothing to you before time. He gives everything to you on time. But if you are off time, you're not going to be there when it's available for you. Or if you're the wrong person and don't deserve it, you're not going to get it. I want you to think about these things. You must look at the woman. When you look at a woman, even before she's given a baby, most women are given breasts. And she's given these breasts in anticipation of a baby. No baby is around before time. Whatever this God, whatever is in creation, it's already here. You might not see it. The baby don't see breasts before they're born. But the breasts are here already waiting. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad also said, for every physical
physical law. There's a spiritual law. Can you comprehend where I'm coming from with this? And you and the male, the man, you put so much on yourself. Put so much burden on yourself. And you place yourself in a place where you are non-functioning because men can't develop breasts. You can develop breasts spiritually, but you don't know how to get them. So you can, so the babies can suckle off the breasts. And the reason why you cannot get spiritual or mental breasts is because the woman you still refuse to place her in her proper position so that you can study her. And that now you can't get the breast that you need. So since you are a man and it's always about the man, it's about Muhammad, it's about Master Farah Muhammad, Muhammad and Abraham and Jesus and all these men. But none of these men have breasts. And they can, they can, help bring life but they can't give life and they can't develop life and they can't maintain life because men don't have breasts and you don't understand the concept because you made your woman inferior and you don't see the value and comprehend what the woman is beside physical breasts and booty and pleasure seeking She's a breeder to you. Have my baby. And you're not even worth having a baby by. So now you have a nation of people. A nation of babies. But they have no breasts. To suckle. So they can get the proper milk. In order to gain strength. So you run. To the breast of Scientology. You run to the breast of Similac. Infamil. And now you're having internal problems. I might and hope that I'm incorrect. But I'm not that far off. Don't blame me. You chose to destroy yourself. Instead of running to your God. When you became frustrated and in desperation, you ran to the enemy that you teach is against God. So now we have a man like Tommy Sotomayor. And Tommy Sotomayor is trying to be associated with the black conscious community. Why is this? But Tommy Sotomayor, he wants his name to be associated with heavyweights in the black conscious community, the black liberation struggle. People like our brother, Dr. Umar Abdullah Johnson. What is Tommy Sotomayor trying to do? Tommy Sotomayor is not even... It's not even a secret. He's telling you. Tommy Sotomayor says that his mentor, the man that helped him make him who he is, Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh is not black. Rush Limbaugh is not part of the black conscious community. In fact, he's an enemy to the black conscious community. Rush Limbaugh is a dope thing, a known dope thing. And Rush Limbaugh is a woman hater. Tommy Sotomayor is a woman hater. Tommy Sotomayor admits and confess that he's a drunk and he probably used some drugs on the side. Tommy Sotomayor also admit that his sponsors are known racist. And you want, and you would want Tommy Sotomayor on the same stage as Dr. Umar Abdullah Johnson. Why would Dr. Umar Abdullah Johnson want to share the stage with a man whose mentor is an enemy to the black conscious community?
You tell me. Why would Umar Johnson want to share the stage with a man whose sponsors are known racist? Please talk black to me. Brother Eric Muhammad, talk black to me. If you accept Tommy Sotomayor into the black conscious community, then you are also accepting his racist friends. Just like Minister Farrakhan embraced Scientology and his father Fager and his white friends. You should be dis disconnecting yourself from your oppressor rather than trying to connect. This is not going to work. And there's nothing wrong with having your Caucasian friends or pink friends. But you are supposed to connect with your brothers and sisters first. How can I justify being friends and associates with Caucasian people who are the oppressor, but yet I have failed to establish love and community and unity with my own people? Something is wrong with your thinking. Something is wrong with somebody. And so you accept and embrace these races and you begin to drink since you are unable to develop your own breasts. You still stay in a slave-like condition. And since you don't have breasts of your own, then you begin to drink the poison from the breast of your oppressor and you all will begin to suffer internal problems and after you begin to suffer internal problems soon after that you get sick and you will die I'm telling you this this is the natural order of things when you drinking milk from outside of your mother's breast these are not your mother there is deceit going on Tommy Sotomayor wishes to trick the weak-minded people with the thoughts of grand, grandeur, wealth, and celebrity. Sell your soul for a few pieces of silver. Tommy Sotomayor can't even compare to the weakest person in the black conscious community. The black conscious community represents, from my understanding, the upliftment and the awakening of our people to the knowledge of themselves. Tommy Sotomayor is a dead Negro. He's nowhere near awake. The black conscious community represents understanding the sickness that our people suffer. The black conscious community is, should be a nurse to the sick. While Tommy Sotomayor makes mockery of the sick, slaps the sick, kick the sick in their backside. While the black conscious community, you care. This man does not care about black people. Nor do, nor do the races that is your friends and associates. And as long as you taking the devil for a friend, you going to lose. And he's going to take you down laughing at you for being a fool, trying to get something for nothing. Thinking you. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple.